Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting rational equation. You could probably turn this into a polynomial equation too, but as is, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with. So we have 7 times the quantity x plus 1 over x minus 2 times the quantity x squared plus 1 over x squared equals 9. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end, which is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and use substitution to solve this problem. Uh, we're going to get some interesting results. And then I'll also give you uh, one of my observations for this problem, because when I saw this problem, I think it was in an Olympiad uh, book or whatever, I can't remember. But uh, I thought of an idea that would work, and then I also want to share that with you. So let's go ahead and get to work. I have x plus 1 over x and x squared plus 1 over x squared. When you see these two things together, you should definitely know that they are related. How? If you square x plus 1 over x, you get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2ab, which gives you 2. So they're reciprocals, so they just cancel out. So what does this tell you? This tells you that we could use substitution, right? And you could also memorize this as a formula because this would be super duper helpful. Now, if I call this something, like let's say suppose x plus 1 over x equals u. We haven't used u for a while. We use t a lot. Let's use u this time. Okay? Not u, but the variable u. So if x plus 1 over x is u, then x squared plus 1 over x squared is going to be what in terms of u? So you can go ahead and isolate this, subtract 2 from this, you're going to get u squared minus 2. That's what's beautiful about these identities. Make sense? Let's go ahead and substitute both of these into our equation. We have 7 times u minus 2 times u squared minus 2 equals 9. And this is awesome. You know why? Because it's quadratic. Beautiful. Okay. So we can go ahead and simplify this. 7u minus 2u squared. 2u. If it's, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. 2 It's not 2u. It's 2u squared. I missed that one. Equals 9. Let's go ahead and put uh, u squared on the positive side. Minus 7u. And then plus 5 equals 0. What is one of the thing? If you've seen my previous videos, you should know the answer to this question. What would you check if you have a polynomial equation first? The answer is sum of coefficients. And the sum of coefficients is 2 minus 7 plus 5 equals 0, which means u equals 1 is a solution. Awesome, we got one of the solutions. Well, even if you didn't, you could solve it because, come on, this is quadratic. You hopefully know the quadratic formula. If you don't, this is the time to learn. The quadratic formula is basically like negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Like, what is... What is the equation, right? So if, suppose you have a u squared plus b u plus c equals 0, then this would be the u values. You could also call this u sub 1 comma 2. Make sense? If this is your equation, this is the solution. That's called the quadratic formula. Awesome. Now, if you didn't know that, now hopefully you learned the quadratic formula. Obviously, you've got to need some practice, but anyways, this is a start. So now we know u equals 1 is a solution. And how do you find the other one? There's a couple of ways to go about it. Let me show you. This is fun. You could go ahead and manipulate this equation, make it factorable such that u minus 1 is a factor all the time because factor theorem tells us if u equals 1 is a solution, u minus 1 is a factor. Isn't that nice? So we can do the following. 2u squared minus, yay, I got it finally, 2u. Happy birthday to you. Now I got neg negative 7u, so I need to do negative 5u, and then plus 5 will conclude the work. And notice that this is factorable by grouping. And guess what? The other factor will be revealed as what? 2u, yay, happy birthday one more time, several times, time u, 2u minus 5 times u minus 1. And from here you get u equals 5 halves. So we got two solutions, great. Another way to find the other solution, once you know that u equals 1 works, let me also show you that because that's also a very cool approach. And I made a video on Vieta's formulas. You can also go ahead and 
check that out here. Hopefully, I won't forget to include the link. Okay, the other uh, method is using Vieta's formulas. Uh, Vieta told us, thanks, thank you, Vieta. U1 times U2 is C over A, which is 5 halves. If U1 is 1, then U2 automatically is 5 halves. You see how powerful that is? Divide C by A, and you got the product of two roots. The sum is negative B over A. Okay, all the time. Great, so we got both solutions, so why not find X, right? What is X? X plus 1 over X equals U, right? Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. U equals x plus 1 over x, and we found two values. So let's start with the second one, because the first one is more interesting, so I'm going to save it for last. And I'll also tell you something about it, which is really cool. Anyways, polynomials are cool. Did I tell you that before? So x plus 1 over x equals one, 5 halves is going to give you, let's multiply both sides by, I don't know, x first. x squared plus 1 equals 5 over 2x. And then by 2, you could also multiply by 2x, no big deal. Uh, easy stuff, you can handle it. 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. By the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 25 minus 4 times 4, 16. That's a 9. Hmm. That's interesting. 2a is 4. Look, I told you quadratic formula will be helpful. This is 5 plus 3 over 4, or 5 minus 3 over 4, if you split up the solutions. 8 over 4 is 2, and this is 1 half. Wait a minute. They are reciprocals. Yes, they are reciprocals, and you could probably tell if you were, if you had to guess, think about it, like a number plus its reciprocal is five halves, so that number can be two. But if two works, one half works because they are reciprocals. Makes sense? Just like the complex number problem we did, like, was it two hours ago? Yeah. If you haven't seen it, please do check it out. So you can see reciprocals work. Okay, so we got two values, but what about the other equation, right? Okay, let's take a look. The other equation gives us 1. u equals 1, remember? And from here, you get something interesting. But before we get to that interesting thing, let me tell you something. Because I saw this as soon as I saw the problem, and hopefully you saw that too. This is what I noticed. And it's not like uh, something to brag about, but anyways, I just want to share with you. I noticed that 7 plus 2 is equal to 9. Wow, great <laughs> breakthrough, right? Well, it kind of helps because if this is 1 and this is negative 1, then boom, I got the answer, right? Well, is that possible at all? Well, my u value is saying that x plus 1 over x is equal to 1, but does that imply x squared plus 1 over x? Let's check it out. If x plus 1 over x is equal to 1, then x squared plus 1 is equal to x, or x squared is x minus 1. Okay, great. What about x to the fourth power? Square both sides. This is what I love at polynomials. You can just do lots of fun things. x to the fourth becomes this, but x squared is always x minus 1. Remember that. That doesn't change regardless of the value of x. So we get x minus 1 minus 2x plus 1. 1 cancels out. We end up with negative x. Beautiful. So x to the fourth can be replaced with negative x, but why do I need to replace x to the fourth with something? Because it's coming up. Look at that make a common denominator and then replace x x to the <laughs> x to the fourth with negative x negative x plus 1 over x squared but also remember to re uh, replace x squared with x minus 1 negative x plus 1 over x minus 1 and guess what this is negative 1 if x is equal, not equal to 1 of course and it's not right it's impossible for the x to be 1 so we got negative 1 from here if x plus 1 over x is 1, then x squared plus 1 over x squared is negative 1. Therefore, it works. But what are the solutions? This doesn't give me the solutions. Well, if you solve this quadratic, you're going to get the solutions. Let's go ahead and solve it. So from here, we got this interesting... I don't know if it's interesting for you, but it's kind of interesting for me. We got this interesting equation which doesn't have any real solutions, but it has complex solutions. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4, negative 3 over 2, and that's going to be 1 plus minus root 3i over 2. And guess what? These are complex cube roots of negative 1? I think so. Anyways, this is the graph. And graph only shows you the real solutions. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.